John Mutcher here, pastor at the Ferndale Alliance Church. And what a horrible week we've had as a nation. What an awful weekend. And we'll come back to that in just a few moments. But I want to begin by reading our passage for today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14, 15, and 16. Jesus looking at his disciples, looking at his followers. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ as I am, He's speaking to you and me, and he says these words, especially important right now. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. And said they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Here's my question. What prevents our light from shining in this dark world right now? Before we delve into that, I want you to think about light, early light, before LEDs, before fluorescent bulbs, before incandescent lighting, before the lantern, before candles, even before fire was used as a source of light. What was the original light? Well, it was the sun and the moon. Isn't that cool? Can you imagine early man being dependent entirely for light on either the sun or the moon? Genesis chapter 1 verse 16 says this. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Two lights sun and moon. And here is where I'm going with this. The moon does not generate its own light, its own visible light. It's dependent entirely upon the light that's generated and reflected and emanated by the sun. The moon's just this round rock that orbits the planet. But when the, the sun has such great energy and great light that it lights up the moon, of course, it lights up the earth. And at nighttime, the moon can shine its light upon the dark earth. And I once heard a preacher draw an interesting illustration or allegory. He says that we as Christians are like the moon. We have no natural light in us, no natural life, no moral goodness at all, apart from the source of light, which of course is God. And God, of course, is compared to light and even called light in the scriptures. And just as the sun gives reflective light to the moon, which lets it shine in the darkness, our Lord gives reflective light to us when we walk with him. And how does he do that? Well, he does it by his spirit. He does it in actions and service that he inspires within us. He does it when he develops our character and when he shows us examples that we follow and model. We then become the light. We become light in this dark world. But the light can be blocked just as the moon's light is blocked. We don't always have at night when it's dark out, we don't always have the light of the moon. Sometimes the moon's position in relationship to the sun and the earth, it's behind us. It's on the other side of the planet. And so the earth behind us is blocking the light from the sun to uh, not able to reflect off of a moon that we don't see. Other times when the moon is right before us, maybe, maybe in perfect alignment at night before us, we have what's called an eclipse. In fact, we're going to have an eclipse this Friday and Saturday where the moon can be there. We can see the moon, but it's darker because most of the light from the sun is being blocked from lighting up the moon. In the same way that the earth or the world can block the moon's light in the same way the earth can get in the way of our light. Once again, uh, the earth, the world, the world can get in the way of the light that God wants to shine in and through us. And so I want to talk a little bit about what that means to us what it means to us to allow the world to block that light. By the way, Jesus uses a slightly different metaphor. It's just like having a candle or a lantern and we cover it up. The light exists. God is in us. There is light in us. 
but it's being covered up. It's being blocked. It's being blocked by the world around us. And we live in a really dark time right now. There's a lot of good things going on right now. I feel like it's you know, Charles Dickens, you know, it's the best of time and the worst of times, but there's a lot of best, but there's also a lot of worst. We just hit the 100,000 mark of Americans dying because of COVID-19. We will likely see the largest unemployment rate our country has ever seen, at least since the Great Depression. We have seen the needless and senseless and outrageous killing of a black man under police custody, George Floyd. We are reminded again that we indeed have some, some bad cops. We've seen riots in many major U.S. cities, including our own Seattle and Bellevue. Billions of dollars in needless destruction of property. And so far, a half dozen Americans have lost their lives because of the riots. At the personal level, our accustomed freedoms here, including the ability to go to church when we want to be with who we want to be with, going to a sporting event or a movie, those freedoms have been greatly diminished. There are tempers and political polarization, anger, frustration, prejudice, prejudice that we've seen, an economy on the verge of tanking, stress at home, money fears, small businesses, mom and pop businesses, people who have put their entire life savings and mortgaged everything to start businesses on the verge of losing everything. There are health fears and the list goes on and on. Very unique times that we will not soon forget. Plenty of darkness, plenty of darkness. And now more than ever, we need to be lights in the world that we find ourselves in. And so I'd like to talk about what that light might look like and how we need to choose not to do things like, like the world does things. And in, in Romans 12, verse two, it says that we should not let the world press us into its mold. There's a worldly way of doing things and we may have to buck the trends. We may have to may have to go against our peer groups, uh, maybe against our own political party or against our co-workers or even our own families and ask this real basic question that we've heard before, WWJD, WWJD, what would Jesus do? It's, that would be a great filter to run all of our actions through. What would Jesus do? What would he say? Remember, he wasn't a wimp. My goodness, he was uncompromising, completely sacrificial, and totally all in. He wasn't afraid to attack the status quo and social injustices of his time. But he never once committed an act of arson or vandalism or injury, or injury to anyone, unless you count overturning a table to as vandalism. He shows us what it means to be light in this dark world. So here are some examples of things I think we can do to be light in our world. You can, you can think of a lot more than I can in this little short video. First of all, I rejoice to see citizens clean up their citizens this weekend. After the rioting of Friday and Saturday, citizens showing up with brooms and garbage, uh, garbage bags cleaning up. How about peaceful and respectful protests? Not crude, profane, ugly, dirty, threatening, intimidating. That's not the way of Jesus, nor was it the way of Dr. King. Not the destruction. There's no excuse for the destruction of anybody's property or harm to any person. How about citizens at this time checking in on friends and neighbors who can't or won't leave their homes to see if they have what they need, if you can do anything to help them out? How about words of praise and gratitude toward our first responders and our healthcare workers who are tirelessly working on our behalf? How about extending the greatest of courtesy to all, to all, even those that have a different point of view, who have different convictions and feelings about what's going on right now? It is about respect. It is about respect. How about speaking words of grace and praise, not being petty, not being selfish, not full of complaining or insults. And how about resisting the urge to make broad assumptions 
and generalizations about law enforcement in general because of the horrible actions of a few. I used to be a public fish official and I worked with police officers for 10 years. As a mayor of Ferndale, I was the boss of two chiefs of police and got to know law enforcement very well. City of Ferndale has a fantastic police force of dedicated servants that only want what's best for their community and for its citizens. And I used to think we must be unique or special. That's not the case. I've gotten to know people from everywhere who work in law enforcement and they choose that profession for the most part because they want to serve their community. They want to make a difference. I can't even imagine somebody wanting to be a cop right now. Can you imagine going into these volatile situations where you don't know who's going to throw something at you or cause harm to you? It's tough being a cop. And I want to suggest to everybody watching this through this video, have thumbs up. You see a cop, thumbs up. Offer a word of encouragement to them. Let them know you appreciate them. At the very least, pray for them. They are watching over us. Also, we ought to not make generalizations about the protesters. There are people that protest and people that don't. And those that don't should be not so quick to judge those that do. Most are peaceful. Most are clearly peaceful. They, they want a better world a better society, a better community, a better country. Um, we might disagree on how to get there, but we all want a better nation. Let's be very careful about our judgment of those who are protesters. There is a difference between the protesters and the small, small minority of rioters. And finally, one more thing. Before you write or post or say anything, regarding the current climate, the political climate, and the current conflict regarding recent events, do some things. Check your heart. What's your motive? Check your facts. Are you certain your facts line up? Check your attitude. Check your tone. And check your empathy and your understanding and ask is this bringing light? Are these words, are these actions bringing light that represent Jesus Christ? Does this look like something Jesus would say or do? Or am I allowing this world to snuff out the light that God wishes to shine in us? Go be the light. Go be the light of the world. This is a great time to do that. I know that we can. Thank you for watching and have a great day.